Um, so these protocol discussions are where we have uh, go over CAPS, which are core advancement proposals. These are basically specifications for how to update Stellar Core um, and the Stellar Protocol in order to implement new features and make major changes. Um, any uh, CAP actually goes through a process where it's drafted. Um, it's discussed in open on the Stellar Dev mailing list, which you can join. Uh, and then eventually it's brought to this meeting when it's time for a synchronous discussion. All CAPs go through a review process, get vetted, and eventually before they're approved, they're, there's um, a, a pretty lengthy um, in, engagement with the, the greater Stellar ecosystem. Uh, finally, when they are approved, they actually get bundled up into a new major protocol release. And before that protocol release actually hits the network, goes live on the network, validators have to agree to accept that change. So there is also a validator governance um, step that's required before the actual turning on of a new feature on Stellar. Um, so lately, we have not had that many um, protocol meetings, and that's because we've been... I'm, I'm just going to see if I can invite some people up to speak. Um, uh, and that is because uh, the, the the caps that we've been working on relate to Soroban, which is the uh, smart contracts platform that we're building that will bring smart contracts to Stellar. And uh, a lot of work has been done on, on the implementation side, right? So earlier this year, we were talking through about eight caps. And for now, we've sort of worked on implementation of those. We have launched them on the future net. So if you're listening to this and you want to experiment with Soroban, you can on a dev network, a dev test network that exists right now. Um, but today we do have a discussion that we want to have around a cap, um, which hit the mailing list. There were some changes that hit the mailing list earlier, uh, I, actually I think yesterday. And so that cap is cap 46-06, smart contract standardized asset. Uh, there's a link to the actual cap in the show notes or in the event description. Uh, so if you want to follow this discussion, which will be technical, I definitely advise reading the cap. We're going to get into the details um, today. And so I, is there anyone else who needs to be brought up to the stage? I guess we can go ahead and start and we can bring people on stage as necessary. I think to start with CAP 4606, um, Siddharth, do you want to just start out by talking a little bit about the CAP by walking through the changes and uh, just sort of set up the discussion for the rest of the meeting? Yeah, I can do that. So uh, this CAP is about uh, a standardized token contract uh, on Soroban or what we call now the, uh, the built-in token contract. Um, and, you know, we, we already have an initial implementation of this that people are using on FutureNet, and this cap has been out for a while, but I'll go over the recent changes at, at a high level. Uh, so the most significant one is, is that the token balances have been updated from uh, big int to uh, U128. Uh, and again, these, these are just updates to the cap, not the actual implementation yet. Um, Approve, the approve function was replaced with uh, increase allowance and decrease allowance methods. Uh, there were some naming changes to make Soroban terminology match up with Stellar Classic, like burn was uh, change to clawback, freeze to deauthorize, unfreeze to authorize. Um, we allowed the admin to disable clawback, along with rules on how it's set for wrapped assets. Um, and then there's, this wasn't explicitly added to the cap, it was in the mailing list, uh, discussions around how auth required should be handled. And I had two ideas there that we can discuss. Um, and it sounds like auth required is, is something that we, we will need to handle. Um, yeah, so does anyone have any questions? Questions, comments? Let's start with something simple. Uh, the naming conventions, I understand they align with uh, with Stellar Classic. Do they also align with um, the you know the greater kind of like cryptocurrency ecosystem and equivalent contracts on say um, Ethereum? So the, the burn to clawback the, uh, that that actually matches up with uh, like ERC twenty for example. Burn on the Open Zeppelin ERC twenty. Standard it actually refers to a user burning their own balance, uh, which is not what burn does it does in the token contract today in, in the in the Sorbon token contract. Uh, that matches clawback. Uh, for freeze, unfreeze, um, uh, it this is a, a question we had. This like I I switched it to authorize the author just because we want to be we want clawback to be able to be used on frozen balances, and we didn't want someone to make the assumption that a you know, a frozen balance can change because it can through call clawback. Um, I believe uh, on 
on the Ethereum side, it's actually called, I think it's, I believe it's called Posible, and, and then you unpause it. Uh, so it's a little different from that. Uh, do you have concerns over those differences? Um, yeah, I think the 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 blacklistable contract that, for example, USDC adheres to actually uses a completely different language, which is uh, blacklisting, um, which yeah. obviously has its own uh, issues. Yeah, uh, that's unique to USDC, right? That's not even in a like uh, like a common ERC twenty implementation. Uh, that's a good question. I haven't looked at others. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take a look at that. Okay. Yeah. I definitely think that it makes sense to just like choose something and then go with it. Uh, but maybe just like survey the ecosystem and, and make sure that uh, there are no standards that we're um, overlooking. It doesn't look like we are. Okay. Um, you mentioned some um, art, the the issue with auth required and potential solutions. Can you uh, yeah. talk a bit about um, a what the issue is uh, to reiterate that and uh, what are some potential solutions? Yeah. So currently uh, on Solar Classic, if the issuer ha is uh, has the auth required flag set, any new trust line will be deauthorized by default. Uh, and, the, and the reason for this is that, you know, the issuer may want to verify the the owner of the trust line to make sure that, you know, they can go, they go through KYC and, you know, you, you go through, you pass whatever regulations that they need to, and then you enable the, uh, the trust line and they, they can do what they want. Uh, that concept does not exist at the moment in the built-in token contract. So if you send to a new balance, uh, if you send an asset that is auth required on the classic side, that's wrapped and so are you send it to a new balance that this new entity can receive it. And this breaks the, you know, the auth required semantics. So the one idea I had was that in, uh, in the token contract, there are no balances by default at the beginning and they only exist once they are, you know, once it's actually written, uh, into a, a ledger entry. And uh, so you can kind of you can treat that right as the initialization of the balance. And my idea was to tie, like when when you do that new like the when you create this new balance, you check the issuer, and if it does exist, then you block it and you require that the issuer explicitly proves that trust line. Or it's not that trust line. It proves that balance or that identifier before it's created. Um, there are some issues around this related to. Um, you know, how you would actually indicate that it's authorized, uh, but th this is like that's the, that's the, the best idea I have so far. The other one is to just not allow, it's just disable adding controls or not adding controls on Sorbon contract uh, for wrapped assets that that have uh, auth required set. But this makes it much more difficult for uh, auth required assets to be used on seller on Sorbon. Sorry. There's also an uh, maybe an axe like approach in which we just don't enable Soroban, uh, like importing and exporting at all to auth acquired assets. That's true, but uh, Jake has mentioned that uh, there are some partners that are auth acquired that want to participate in Soroban. So that wouldn't be possible in that case. Uh, and it, depend, you know, it, it depends on what we, what we want to do with those assets. Are there drawbacks to the first approach that you outlined? Uh, it it adds it, it just it adds some complexity. Uh, like for example, how do you store this? I made this change in the cap, but it, it actually isn't ideal. Where before we had this uh, a flag for when things are frozen, which is not the normal case. Uh, so if you never freeze a balance in the current token contract, you never write this extra ledger entry that that writes a specific flag. But I changed the cap. To, to write the authorized flag. So every balance will have a new entry that says authorized, so which is not necessary uh, by default for non-auth required assets. I, I have an idea to fix this. You know, you can tie the balance and this flag in a single ledger entry. Um, 
but it's just it just adds some complexity. But I I, but we, I think we do need to either not allow auth required assets in Sorbonne or you know uh, allow them using using a mechanism like this. Um, so I, I feel like if you want to allow auth required assets on Sorbonne, like this is uh, probably the, the best or something similar to this is the best thing we can do. But, uh, so just to be on the same page, this means we effectively increase the complexity of the these wrapped token contracts but the standard token contract that you can still um you know like issue uh that's pure soroban does, does it also inherit these complexities uh, i think we can we can do it in a way where it doesn't right like it, if because you can if you can tell that it's a wrapped token contract and in that case then you can uh Check the issuer and check auth required. But if if it's not a wrapped token, then you can ignore all of this, right? And from a contract developer's perspective, that wants to interact, uh, from their perspective, it's just the standard. Like, are we changing the standard token interface, um, or from their perspective, it's just another ERC twenty like standard token uh, implementer? Uh, I. The interface shouldn't have to change. Maybe the semantics around authorization, the authorization would, but I, I think we can do it in a way where it, it wouldn't, it would, it would be transparent to uh, Sorbonne tokens. Does that make sense? Yes. One thing I'll, I'll just say quickly is that, um, you know, in today's Today on the network, the assets that use auth required, they um, there aren't a lot of account holders, but we are seeing organizations that are looking to have auth required assets be used on Sorbonne, but also used by a, a fairly large audience. So I, I would I don't know if you know going forward with an approach where auth required assets just simply aren't usable on Sorbonne is is I mean we could do it. Um, but it's going to cut off some some use cases, or for organizations that, um, you know, from a regulatory compliance perspective, like need to have uh, th this um, requirement to KYC like holders before holding their asset. So, Jake, just to be on the same page, like you're saying that there is a group of issuers that is growing and is um, auth required or planning to, to issue auth required assets. Um, and out of this group, there is a non-trivial uh, um, subgroup that is interested in having their assets um, available and, and uh, for like DeFi and Sorbonne. Exactly, yeah, we, we have a partner today that's looking to um, you know participate in uh, like AMMs and um, and other like DeFi constructs on Sorbon, but the asset they would like to, to use, um, they are planning on using auth required. Okay. One, one aspect of this, which I think is a good thing, but it's good to note, is if we go to the, the first approach I mentioned, the issuer will need to approve any address, any, any identifier on Sorbon that wants to accept the balance. So even if it's like a liquidity pool, the issuer must, uh, you know, approve that that liquidity pool's address in the token contract. Yeah, under, understood. I think that's actually exactly what they're looking for. Yeah, yeah. There are a couple uh, of questions in the live chat too. I don't know if you want to take a look at them, Sid, or, or you want me to just read them out. Let's see. Uh, where is this? Oh, the. Uh... Yeah, yeah, I. Well, one is. Oh, yeah, I find you... burn. Yeah. Okay. And then if you look below that, there's some. There's three. There's, a, there's yeah. two questions. So for Clawback. Sorry, Tomer, you want to go? No. Okay. Uh, Clawback is, uh, I think it's it's something we wanted to support because it's supported on the uh, the classic side, right? And if you have a, an asset that is clawbackable uh, on classic, and you move it over to 
Sorbonne, and you know it's a, it's a control you want to give the issue, and it can be it can be disabled. Um, I, I do agree that clawback versus burn is, is a little confusing. We don't actually like the, the cap doesn't specify a burn in the ERC twenty cents, um, and may, maybe it should. Uh, right now, I think that like what you could do is send to a zero U two five five one nine address, but maybe that's not sufficient. Um, but I agree, and maybe we can uh, I can think about like naming differences there a little more. Um, so for the so for Mutz's question for the decimals. Uh, I agree. So yeah, the cap is actually missing. I believe it's missing decimals for the the non-wrapped case. Um, and the idea there uh, was that you know the user could specify whatever they, whatever they want, but we should specify uh, a standard. And I, I don't. We haven't discussed that yet. This still depends on the discussion of you know we, we moved from big M to U U one twenty eight, but I think there's still some. Uh, Discussions that have to go on there with what we think a default uh, decimal should be. Um, so, it's, uh, maybe we can start by: uh, Is there anyone that objects to U one twenty eight as the as a standard token contract um, uh, the, uh, number type? Okay. Going, Simple. going, gone. Okay. And so the Moots' is next question for the auth required solutions. When we run into weird situations where only Stellar accounts can participate, or other non-auth required built-in tokens support Stellar accounts, contracts, and basic eighty two five five one nine keys, I, I can't think of a, of, a, of a reason why this would happen off the top of my head. Uh, there's no difference. To, um, you know th this auth required mechanism that I mentioned, and a identifier that is is deauthorized. So I'm not. I can't think of a, an example like this. If you have one, let me know, and I can, I can think about that. Uh, what about looking at wrapped smart contract as an on off ramp? I'm not sure uh, what that what that means. Lee. Yeah, I'm just thinking about um, the term callback and and you know if that is a problematic term. I mean, it's. I feel like the term is understood in other financial uh, ecosystems, um, but maybe yeah, if it if it's not a good term to be using sort of going forward in a in a blockchain world. Um, would it be too ambiguous, do you think, if, if we said that the admin could do a transfer from one from any account to any account? Like, it's sort of the same thing as clawback. Um, and it's, it's sort of maybe bad to do that because we're overloading an operation that can suddenly do something that might be surprising. Um, yeah, I'm... One, one way to, like, try to eliminate that term without needing to replace it. Yeah, but, I mean, I, that sounds... Um like a little more complex right um and it's not even the same thing because in, in the clawback the balance gets burned right which is how it works on classic and currently in the token contract um in your example it wouldn't get burned right it would get sent to another address i guess you could send it to the zero u two five five one nine key um i i think this is something we should discuss because to me you know clawback already exists on stellar right so and it, and it works almost the same on sorbonne so it made sense to me to, to change the name, but uh, if enough people, it, like, it, I, it, I think it's something we should discuss. Yeah, I'm Yeah, I'm not, I personally think the clawback is probably fine because we already have that definition. And I think it sounds like the folks who are planning to use um, this today already understand what it means. Um, uh, sorry, I have a, a bit of a, a bit question on a tangent to, to what you you just mentioned. You, you said that uh, so clawback. What, what so on Stellar? If you transfer to the issuer, you're essentially burning because the asset disappears. Yeah. 
Um, because the issuer can't hold the balance of the asset they issue. Um, what happens if you transfer to the admin, I get the, or, or transfer to the issuer um, on the Soroban? The Soroban, it, it, it doesn't get burnt. It just it, it updates the issuer's balance. Like the issuer or, or the admin account doesn't have uh, any exception when it comes to like transfers or anything like that. You got it. Thanks. So, authorized trust on inheritance seller class, in which case you need a seller account to obtain authorized flag. So, that that is how it works on Classic. Like, uh, you need the trust line to to get authorized by the issuer. Um, and on, on Sorbon, we would I imitate the same. Thing. The the admin of the, the admin on Sorbon would need to explicitly authorize. On Soroban, we will have we have this method called authorize, and it will authorize that balance. Um, does that answer your question, Moots? Okay. And I the, the naming there, kind of may, like maybe you need to think about that some more. The fact that there's you know you have you can authorize on Classic, and then you can also authorize on Soroban, but Sorbonne authorization doesn't work the same. Like it, it's much simpler than Dijon. Could you elaborate what's the differences? Yeah. Just so we're all clear on that. Uh, I, yeah. So you know, in, in classic, you can. Uh, there's lot different levels of authorization. Uh, that's what I mean. You can have a uh, you know fully authorized, be deauthorized. You can be. Uh, you can authorize to maintain liabilities, right? You can maintain offers and liquidity pool uh, deposits, but you can't do anything with your balance. And I believe there's also a, uh, a flag that says you can actually claw back from the trust line. Uh, and that flag is maintained currently in the proposal in Soroban, like the clawback flag, but it's at the contract level and not at a balance level. Uh, because my idea of the thought process was, I don't think it needs to be at the balance level and it would add a lot more complexity. Um, but yeah, those are the differences. All right. Any, uh, any other questions, any concerns? Do you, do you have the answers that you need to move forward? Uh, I, I believe I do. Uh, so for the auth required uh, solution, I, I think I, I need to rework what I have a little bit to make sure that the um, the non wrap scenario doesn't doesn't change or get any worse. Um, uh, other than that, it doesn't sound like oh that and uh, I need to I should, like naming right, looking at burn versus clawback in the ecosystem. Uh, claw, yeah, about other than those two things, I don't think there's anything else. I need to look at. Well, I, I think there is maybe like a symmetry uh, question there, right? Like uh, that I, I, was, I was just thinking about that is when I think of the built-in token contract versus the uh, more generic uh, interface, right? That we are exposing that people can use when they uh, implement the, the contract. Um, isn't there like, um, if we have like this auth require thing, right? Like it basically limits the, the, the way you can, um, do payments, right. Uh, from the outside. So like, is, is that pointing to like a, I don't know, like having, um, it's it basically an implicit, um, uh, like, um, like yeah like hook you know i know the original cap had like this uh, uh, like section on hooks are evil <laughs> you know we should never do that but uh at the same time this looks like actually like a hook to me uh that happens to be a classic hook uh and i'm just wondering like when we say also that uh people that are that are today um looking at implementing auth required assets want to move uh, some of the functionality into Soroban, are they really 
going to be satisfied with those limited semantics as opposed to I know like a, a lot of the the things that people were asking in the past around programmatic uh, you know being able to basically control the flow of assets was hey I want to put limits you know on uh, on transaction uh, on transactions like you know you can only move ten thousand dollar a day or whatever right like things like that so yeah wondering about that uh, where does that fit in this picture the you know the first requirement uh, at least I was that I was following is that you, you'd, you'd like to be able to support anything that can happen on classic uh, in Soroban, right? In the Bolton Tome contract, which is the you know the goal of adding support for auth required and clawback. Um, what, you're, what you're saying uh, is an interesting idea. Uh, adding hooks to so admins uh, can customize what happens. Uh, but one you know one concern there is you would you would end up executing, like the, the, the uh, one of the nice things with the built-in token contract is it's built-in, right? It doesn't execute Wasm. But if you have these hooks, they would be in Wasm, right? So you would you would take the performance set. Um, and in that case, I, I don't know, you could argue that they should you should be using a different token contract altogether, like one that just adheres to the interface. Uh, do, do you agree on that? You mean like, uh, yeah, I guess like as soon as you have hooks, you can't do like a, a classic payment, for example, because you're bypassing the hook. Is that what you're talking about? I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, I'm, I'm saying that if you add a hook, the hook would be in Wasm, right? Like you call yeah. into another contract? Yeah, so... Well, for the built-in, uh, yeah, I guess for like the uh, default behavior, you would, yeah, you would just call the built-in token contract that would have a default implementation, right, to implement those... Uh, auth require type of semantics, but I could see like the need for maybe like finer control uh, in general and... Uh, oh, like finer control that we would provide later on? Or that uh, like any... No, that uh, issuers would want to, uh, yeah, to have, yeah. But I guess maybe those end up just being like separate, you know, they are not using the built-in token contract at that point. So that's kind of what I'm trying to wonder, I'm wondering about is like those use cases with odd required assets in Soroban, they are not, people are not going to be able to actually implement, I think the type of things they are looking after that is like, a, like I said, like people ask before the, the, the feature request around the, the hooks where things like uh, maximum or conditions on the transaction, right? Like, uh, uh, not just it was not just a flag. It was basically like a, you know open-ended type of conditions, and at yeah. that point, use the built-in token contract, which it may be okay, but you know, I then I'm kind of questioning the. What Nico, are, are, you talking, are you talking about uh, from the perspective of net new issuers, or from the perspective of existing issuers that want to introduce um, new constraints or like new? Yeah, that's kind of. I'm I'm just wondering, like like the people that have like those uh, like uh, as um, auth required assets, if they think that they can basically over time add more conditions, this is actually not going to work. Get right. right? You got it. So to some extent, I hear like a question to, to Jake, if he's still here, which is, uh, you know, these new issuers that are coming on board and are interested in auth required uh, assets, maybe the solution for them is to actually issue a, a custom contract on Soroban rather than an auth required asset on Classic and kind of like trying to constrain it to be what they want it to be. Yeah, we we've talked about you know something similar with like uh, regulated assets, assets that need much more fine grain control. Um, and in those cases, I think it makes sense to to use a new token contract. Right, the built-in to the built-in token contract can't do everything, right? And I, I'm not, I don't think adding these, I don't think adding these hooks is a good idea into the built-in token contract. Um, yeah, just uh, my opinion. Yeah, I think that our position should be that if you want these type of uh, conditions and restraints, you should definitely deploy your own um, contract that adheres to the standard token interface. You know, same way that we're seeing in Ethereum and other ecosystems. Yeah.
Okay, so let me, um, uh, you know, Sid, I think we're at, we're at a relatively good place with this with this cap. Um, I do think there's a there's like this parallel discussion that probably hasn't matured to bringing it up right now on, uh, you know, this versus like a more discussions that uh, you know we we abandoned a few months ago to make progress, but we need to go back to in terms of, um, you know, single balance versus two balance approach. Um, but I think we need to have a better understanding of what the possibilities are there, uh, before we can actually make like, a um, you know, like the go ahead decision with, with regards to this specific, uh, cap. Yeah, I agree. Anything else anyone wants to discuss or are we done for the day? Okay, cool. I think that we might be done. Um, I'm just checking the live chat to see if there are any un unanswered questions. There's one more from Moots, which is, in the event issuers are pushed to write a custom co token contract, would there be any core support to migrate between a classic slash custom token? I would, I would say no. Uh, it, that's an interesting question, but my intuition would be that, you know, you're, you're trying to do something that, uh, you know, isn't even supported in classic. So it, it makes sense to be a separate token, uh, but that's something that we need to think about more. We, I, I haven't thought much about how, uh, you know, how, how these custom uh, token contracts would work. And so this is in, in a, Response to Mutsu's question on how these, uh, how, if there would be core support between classic and custom tokens. Yeah, I think this is an interesting question because uh, with the built-in contract that we have now, uh, you there is a swap, essentially a swap capability. You have the import-export functions, which you know allow you to essentially swap a token in classic with one in Sorabin. And uh, if we are if the story that we're developing um, is that if you want to, you know, be able to build um, a custom token that provides all these custom auth, auth required type capabilities, um, I think we do need to have some sort of story for how do you replicate that import export? How do you swap something that's on classic with something that is over on Sorovan so that, because um, I can imagine that issuers, even if they want that, more custom capability on Sorbon, they probably still want to get access to things like the, the things on Classic. Like they probably don't want to be siloed into only the Sorbon ecosystem. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. And without something, without some sort of swap capability, and without the ability to, because we're not we're not going to allow Classic operations and Sorbon operations to run in the same transaction. I think we're talking about some sort of off-chain swap capability, which sort of is not great. Yeah, this is, this is something to think about. Like we, you know, you, I don't, I'm not sure how this would work, but you could offer uh, import-export like host functions, but that uh, that doesn't sound like a good idea to me. But, uh, or, or do it off-chain, like you mentioned. Um, but yeah, it's something to think about. Any other thoughts, uh, questions? Else? Okay, looks like there's one one new one in the live chat from Dimitrio Stellar. Um, why not just have the same sort of one-to-one -one swap between the wrap classic asset token and the new token? Not the best UX, but it's doable right now. Uh, I I think you'd have I I, I have to think about this. I, you might have issues with 
Like, how would you do auth? Like, I, I, that would have to exist as a. Wait, no, I, I'm not. I don't, I'm not sure how if that would work. Like, you would have to call import export. Uh, and the, and like, if I write a contract right now, custom contract, I wouldn't be able to call that, right? Well, I think the 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 issue out there would be the contract, right? So it's actually oh, yeah. the same, um, kind of a. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. That's so, true. Yeah, so you don't actually need special anything. It just uh, happens that yeah, like the. That, that's true. You, you wouldn't have complete control over it. The, the, well, it's yeah, you're actually have complete control over it now because you can get the authorized. But yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah. Let, let me let me think about this. Okay, it feels like we're sort of winding down here. Um, so I, I think we're done for the day. Um, thanks, Sid, for, for putting this out there. Thanks for answering the questions. Thanks for thinking about it. And to everyone else, um, I, I realize that today's protocol discussion was sort of ad hoc and popped out of nowhere. Uh, next year or after Thanksgiving, as, as we start to have these meetings, I'll try to be better about just setting them up more in advance um, and just being a little bit more making people a little bit more aware of what we're doing, what we're talking about, so that um, everyone can sort of get a bit of context before the discussion starts. But for today, um, again, if you want to sort of keep up with these discussions, join the Stellar Dev mailing list. If you want to read this particular CAP, um, it's in the CAP repository, which you can find on GitHub. This is CAP 4606, the Smart Contract Standardized Asset. And with that, I will say goodbye to all of you. Thanks.